Justin here today. We are checking out Mull of Kintyre by Paul McCartney. If Tintana is uh, informing me correctly, it's his biggest hit, which is surprising. But it's a really great song for beginners. It can be played with just three chords, though the original one's got this quirky kind of cool key change in it. So it starts in one key, it modulates to another key, uh, which is the same chord, chord progression in a different key uh, for the bagpipes and then another uh, verse and a chorus. And then it goes back to the original key again, which is kind of interesting. It's also a nice one to get two guitars playing, uh, one with a capo up on the seventh fret and one playing it in the original key in open position. I'm going to show you all of that and a little way to play it as a chord melody as well, like to emulate the bagpipes, kind of, uh, basically, so you can play the melody and the chords at the same time. So before we get into the chords, I want to mention that the song is in 3-4 time, which some of you may not have encountered before. Uh, most common key signature is 4-4, four, four, which means there are four beats in the bar, uh, usually with a heavy accent on beats two and four so you get one two three four and one two three and four and that kind of feel in three four you have a heavier accent on beat one and then strums on two and three which is exactly what paul's doing in this song he's playing a bass note on beat one each time and then a strum on two and three one two three one two three I've sometimes called waltz time because you get do that that do that that, that kind of thing. So let's have a look at that on an A chord, which is the first uh, chord in the song anyway. So for an A chord, you would be playing the A bass note, which is the fifth string here, on beat one, and then just two down strums on two and three. So one, two, three, one, two, three. You'll hear it really clearly at the beginning. That's four bars of the A chord. So after the four bars of the intro, we hit the verse. And the chord sequence for the verse is 12 bars long. It is A, A, D, D, A, A, D, D, and then four bars of A. Let's play through that one. So we've got the intro. It's going to be for four bars. Here's the verse. A of kin, A, O, D, rolling D from. time so for the chorus A for two bars then D for two bars and then A for two bars then D for the two bars then A for four bars noting here that the strumming was picking the A note open fifth string for the A chords. When it goes to the D, we move and we play the fourth string, which is the note D. Back to the A. Really good thing to practice, just going from the A to the D. And I wouldn't get too hung up on it. If you accidentally pick the A when you go to the D, so that you go, Really matter. It's better to try and hit the right bass note, right? So I'm not saying like 
don't try and be accurate. I'm saying try and be accurate, but keeping the pulse of the song is more important, particularly if you're playing with other people and someone else is going to sing along. Don't mess the groove up in order to get the bass note right. If you're really struggling with that, ignore playing the bass note and just strum three times. That's totally fine as well. But it does sound just like the record to work on the bass strum strum thing, and it's a good thing to practice. Uh, it's relatively simple. If you you know give it a couple of hours practice, you'll probably find you can nail it. Something to think about when you're picking out bass notes is possible possibly using an anchor. Now some people love it and some people hate it, but just using a little finger to touch there on the pick guard a bit when you're going to do that note. Some people find that really helpful. Definitely if you're trying to pick it free, it's, it's kind of feels a bit more hazardous, like I might not get it, but if I just, just resting the little finger down there seems to give it kind of No, feels better for me try it and see you don't have to stick with it but it's the kind of thing that's definitely worth a try and see if it helps you with your accuracy on picking out those bass notes so once we've got through the chorus which starts the song with then into the verse and the verse sequence is 16 bars long we've got a a a a d d a a another four bars of a then d d e a to finish off right so that's really worth writing down these sequences visualizing them so you know how they go uh i, I think seeing a structure like that in groups of four is really helpful because the 16 bar thing so you get four sets of four especially you've got four bars of a there that should help clarify uh the order of those chords so let's uh, put that into practice now so we're starting on the a far have i traveled and much have i seen the mountains back to a court of green another four bars of a past painted deserts the sun sets on fire as he d for two bars then the e going to a now that's a really good example there uh, i went to the d chord muffed up the the picking of the notes out a little bit hit the a string didn't really matter okay it's not really a big deal if it goes slightly wonky occasionally of course i would have preferred to have done that but i'm thinking about the lyrics i'm thinking about the chord sequence other stuff which you might be doing too when you're playing it something might distract you or your chops might not be there on that particular instant don't let it bug you just try and keep the song going but let's do it again and see if i can get it slightly uh, righter than that so starting on the a chord <laughs> Far have I traveled, and much have I seen. Decaught the mountain, back to a court of green. Another four of a past painted deserts. The sun sets on fire, and it's deep for two bars, then E. And then A. At the end of that, so after two bars of A, we're changing key to the key of D. So it's the same sequence for the chorus two bars of D, two bars of G, two bars of D, two bars of G, and then uh, the four bars of D again. Now, it does make it really high, very difficult for me to sing. When it first happens on the record, it's played by the bagpipe. So I'll show you a little chord melody in a second, but uh, the basic idea, I'm just going to sing it there so you can see uh, the, the function of it, the way it's working. So on the D chord. On a thin a verse now so sweep through the heather like deer in the plan G carry me back to the D I knew then number four on D nights when we sang like a heavenly choir to the G for two bars then A Man, and it's another verse. 
you can hear it does get pretty squeaky for me up there. You might find it squeaky for you up there too, in which case you probably just want to stay in the key of A, which is going to be fine, unless you've got a bagpipe band coming to join you and they need it in the key of D. You could try playing the tune in the key of A all of the way through. I suspect that's what most people do uh, when they're learning a song like this, a simplified version. You just stay with the same verse sequence and the same chorus sequence all of the way through the song kind of makes it easier if you're going to have a key change then everyone has to be on board with it obviously if some of the people stay in the old key might get a little bit hazardous so be aware of that it's okay to be playing it in a different key uh, sorry to, it's okay to be staying in the same key all of the way through if that's what you choose to do now whether you stay in the same key or not if you've got two guitar players you definitely want to have an explore with using a capo so if you put a capo up on the seventh fret and you play a d chord <laughs> It's actually the same as an A chord. So if one person is playing A, then the only other chord is the E chord. If you've put a capo on the seventh fret, you can then play D. to G in whatever fingering is comfortable for you to D. sounds lovely having those two chords going at the same time the open position a and then the d chord here when the ch when it changes to a d chord in guitar one this one would change to a g chord in the part where it goes to the e chord in the verses you would play an a chord here if you got the capo on the seventh fret also if you change key though so when if you decide that you're going to go to the d chord and the g chord in the uh in guitar one the d chord when you've if you've once you've changed key would become a G chord the other chord that you would have there would be a G and the G would become a C chord with the capo on and if you're doing the bridgey part as well and that goes to an A chord the A we've already talked about is the D so you end up with simply using G C and D for the key change okay so you'd have D G and A for the first key and uh, G C and D for the modulation if you've decided that you're going to modulate it would be a great exercise for two guitar players to learn it with the modulations as well it's a really really nice one to sing definitely recommend having a go at doing this one it's a great Christmas one like I said you got to make a call whether you're going to make the key change or not but I've got one other little thing to show you and I'm going to kind of give you an outline of it I'm not going to go uh, super into the detail with this but a really nice thing to do if you're going to do the key change and you don't want to sing it is to play the melody so just check this out here's here's your D chord this is the original key if you're going to play the melody fits really lovely around here and you can actually kind of play it while you're holding the chord down like this nice the way that to think of it is any of the melody notes that fall on an and you would use an up pick so down up down down to G now this is a G major 7 some of you might not be familiar with that just using first finger on the second fret second fingers playing that G note that would be like a regular two finger G That would be that's open thinner string.
Now that kind of chord melody thing, especially when you're strumming, it is a real fun thing to have a go at working out. The trick is to make sure that you know the rhythm first of all, and then learn the melody on its own as well, so that you can play them independently. Once you can do that, it's a real fun thing to just have a go at blending them together. Do it really slowly, see if you can figure out. A lot of it's about how far you push the pick through, so. I'm just pushing it through two, three strings, then. That's one bit that's tricky, I suppose. So I'm playing that bass note. If, if you're not, if you don't have a melody note on the beat, you probably want to play a bass note. Thinking about it, probably some of you are going to want to see a tab for that little chord melody, so I will add one in the tabs link on the website, so you might want to shoot over and check that out as well. Really hope you enjoyed this one. If you're learning this song for Christmas, do remember to go and check out the Justin Guitar Lessons and Songs app. There are a whole bunch of Christmas songs over there completely for free, so you might have a lot of bit of fun there with some play-along guitar yoki styly stuff. Do check it out. Really hope you enjoyed this lesson. Have a wonderful Christmas if that happens to be that time of year, and I'll see you for more very soon. Bye.